Test 3. I am going to give you the instructions for this test. I shall introduce each part of the test and give you time to look at the questions. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You will hear each piece twice. Remember, while you are listening, write your answers on the question paper. You will have five minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. There will now be a pause. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You will hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions one to eight, choose the best answer, A, B or C. Question one. You are in a supermarket when you hear this announcement about a lost child. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just have your attention, please. We have with us a small boy by the name of Roland. He has red hair and is wearing a green and purple shell suit. He's carrying a blue fluffy rabbit and says that he is four. When he last saw his mummy, he says, she was choosing some pears. If you are his mummy, please come to the customer service desk at the front of the store where he will be waiting for you. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just have your attention, please. We have with us a small boy by the name of Roland. He has red hair and is wearing a green and purple shell suit. He's carrying a blue fluffy rabbit and says that he is four. When he last saw his mummy, he, he says, she was choosing some pears. If you are his mummy, please come to the customer service desk at the front of the store where he will be waiting for you. Question 2. You are in an electrical shop when you overhear this woman speaking to the shop assistant. Uh, it's these curling tongs I bought here last Saturday. What's the problem, madam? Is the item not functioning? No, it works perfectly. That's not the problem at all. Well, then, let me guess. It's damaged? No, it's your price beta guarantee. You clearly said that if I found them at a cheaper price in any other shop, you would refund the difference. And, well, imagine my surprise when I went into Lentham's and saw them there for only nine ninety nine. I mean, I know they're on special offer, but that's not the point. Uh, it's these curling tongs I bought here last Saturday. What's the problem, madam? Is the item not functioning? No, it works perfectly. That's not the problem at all. Well, then, let me guess. It's damaged? No, it's your price beta guarantee. You clearly said that if I found them at a cheaper price in any other shop, you would refund the difference. And, well, imagine my surprise when I went into Lentham's and saw them there for only nine ninety nine. I mean, I know they're on special offer, but that's not the point. Question 3. You overhear a woman talking on the telephone. Yes, Paris. Yes, Paris, France. You still have some tickets? Yes, next Thursday. No smoking, please. And an aisle seat, if possible. Which terminal is that leaving from? I see. And the flight number? BA893. And takeoff time? Yes, Paris. Yes, Paris, France. You still have some tickets? Yes, next Thursday. No smoking, please. And an aisle seat, if possible. Which terminal is that leaving from? I see. And the flight number? BA893. And takeoff time? Question 4. Listen to a policeman talking to a householder. Good morning, sir. Sorry to disturb you. 
This is just part of a routine inquiry. You are the owner of the house? Uh, yes. Then I assume that you are familiar with Mr. Winston of number 43, just across the street there. Uh, yes. Well, if you or any other member of your household happen to know of his whereabouts, we would like to speak to him on a rather urgent matter. Good morning, sir. Sorry to disturb you. This is just part of a routine inquiry. You are the owner of the house? Uh, yes. Then I assume that you are familiar with Mr. Winston of number 43, just across the street there? Uh, yes. Well, if you or any other member of your household happen to know of his whereabouts, we would like to speak to him on a rather urgent matter. Question 5. You are listening to the host of a radio phone-in program speaking. Well, the subject of our phone-in this morning is a rather thorny issue that has been in the news a lot recently. We have heard many opinions from government ministers, church leaders and social workers on this delicate matter, but little has been said by the people themselves. So, today, we want to hear from any single parents out there who are listening. And, in fact, we have one on the line right now. Hello, Mary. Well, the subject of our phone-in this morning is a rather thorny issue that has been in the news a lot recently. We have heard many opinions from government ministers, church leaders and social workers on this delicate matter, but little has been said by the people themselves. So, today, we want to hear from any single parents out there who are listening. And, in fact, we have one on the line right now. Hello, Mary. Question 6. You have joined a four-day sailing course in Britain. Listen to your instructor giving some important information. And now, I want to move on to the subject of water. When you're at sea, you're surrounded by salt water, and this, of course, you cannot drink. Nor can you wash with it. Tap water these days is also not suitable for drinking, but you can wash with it. So we recommend that you carry at least 10 gallons of bottled water, which you can buy from any nautical supply station. When you're buying it, however, you must check the label on the bottle to make sure you're buying the right sort of water. And now I want to move on to the subject of water. When you're at sea, you're surrounded by salt water, and this, of course, you cannot drink, nor can you wash with it. Tap water these days is also not suitable for drinking, but you can wash with it. So we recommend that you carry at least 10 gallons of bottled water, which you can buy from any nautical supply station. When you're buying it, however, you must check the label on the bottle to make sure you're buying the right sort of water. Question 7. You overhear two people talking at a bus stop. So, when you get to the top of the hill, the bus will stop at the lights and you get out there in front of the war memorial. You can't miss it. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Oh, look, here's your bus coming now. Now, don't forget what I said. Thanks again and I hope you don't have to wait too long for yours. Bye. So, when you get to the top of the hill, the bus will stop at the lights and you get out there in front of the war memorial. You can't miss it. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Oh, look, here's your bus coming now. Now, don't forget what I said. Thanks again and I hope you don't have to wait too long for yours. Bye. Question 8. You overhear a man chatting on the telephone about a form he has to fill in. Yes, just like I said, they want to know everything about you. I mean, it's an intrusion upon your privacy. Still, they say that the information is treated as confidential, but why would they want to know Mother's maiden name? And Sophie's grown up now. She's left home. It's not really any of my business whether she has a boyfriend or whether she has any insurance of her own. Anyway, 
Fortunately, they were both willing for me to include those details. Yes, just like I said, they want to know everything about you. I mean, it's an intrusion upon your privacy. Still, they say that the information is treated as confidential, but why would they want to know Mother's maiden name? And Sophie's grown up now. She's left home. It's not really any of my business whether she has a boyfriend or whether she has any insurance of her own. Anyway, fortunately, they were both willing for me to include those details. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two. You will hear part of a radio talk for young people about animals communicating with each other. For questions 9 to 18, complete the sentences with a word or short phrase. You now have 45 seconds in which to look at part 2. If I asked you what the difference is between animals and human beings, you might think for a bit and then suggest something about the fact that humans can speak to each other using a language, or in some cases more than one language. And in a way you would be right. But that is not the whole story by any means. Many animals can communicate in surprisingly complicated ways, but they never quite achieve the range and depth of human languages. At the simplest level, several kinds of insect, including bees, have been observed performing a special dance to tell each other where they can find nectar and pollen, which is their food. This, of course, does not mean that they are using a language. But they are, all the same, communicating something. Many people think that certain birds, like parrots, can speak. But this is in fact not true. Such animals are only capable of copying the sounds of human speech, but have no understanding of these sounds, and generally use them at the wrong time. There is also no apparent logic in the way they select what to copy either. On the other hand, monkeys, apes, and other primates are capable of communicating a small number of basic ideas using a range of simple sounds that are recognized by other members of their social group. Unfortunately, though, none of the groups of monkeys observed so far have developed any form of grammar, and so we cannot call this a language. However, some apes, chimpanzees in particular, can be trained to understand and respond to certain spoken commands by humans. But so far, none have attempted to copy our speech. Now, there is one kind of animal that does just this, although not many people can understand what they are saying. Dolphins have different shaped mouths to humans, and as a result, they are unable to make all the sounds that we can make. They can manage the vowel sounds A, E, I, O, U, and so on, but lack the necessary voice equipment to reproduce our consonants. Thus, a simple phrase like, Hello, how are you? becomes E, O, R, U. But what makes these noises more amazing is that dolphins do show an awareness of when to use such phrases, and in this sense are actually trying to communicate with humans. But by far the most remarkable form of animal communication are the songs of whales. These are fast clicking and squeaking noises that whales make underwater, and the sounds themselves actually contain more information than human speech. Scientists have noticed that some whales repeat certain long phrases of sounds, and this is in fact why they are called songs. 
Of particular interest is a species called the bottle-nosed whale, whose songs have many of the characteristics of human speech. But at the end of the day, we are the only species that have developed proper grammatical languages, and most experts now agree that this is because of the large communities that we live in, where a child growing up can hear hundreds of different examples of his or her language being spoken every day. If for any reason a young child does not get enough contact with other people between the ages of one and four, he or she may never fully develop the power of speech. One can imagine that if whales or dolphins did start living in large communities, then, well, You will hear the piece again. If I asked you what the difference is between animals and human beings, you might think for a bit and then suggest something about the fact that humans can speak to each other using a language, or in some cases more than one language. And in a way you would be right. But that is not the whole story by any means. Many animals can communicate in surprisingly complicated ways, but they never quite achieve the range and depth of human languages. At the simplest level, several kinds of insect, including bees, have been observed performing a special dance to tell each other where they can find nectar and pollen, which is their food. This, of course, does not mean that they are using a language but they are, all the same, communicating something. Many people think that certain birds, like parrots, can speak, but this is in fact not true. Such animals are only capable of copying the sounds of human speech, but have no understanding of these sounds, and generally use them at the wrong time. There is also no apparent logic in the way they select what to copy either. On the other hand, monkeys, apes, and other primates are capable of communicating a small number of basic ideas using a range of simple sounds that are recognized by other members of their social group. Unfortunately, though, none of the groups of monkeys observed so far have developed any form of grammar, and so we cannot call this a language. However, some apes, chimpanzees in particular, can be trained to understand and respond to certain spoken commands by humans, but so far none have attempted to copy our speech. Now, there is one kind of animal that does just this, although not many people can understand what they are saying. Dolphins have different shaped mouths to humans, and as a result they are unable to make all the sounds that we can make. They can manage the vowel sounds A, E, I, O, U, and so on, but lack the necessary voice equipment to reproduce our consonants. Thus, a simple phrase like, Hello, how are you? becomes E, O, R, U. But what makes these noises more amazing is that dolphins do show an awareness of when to use such phrases, and in this sense are actually trying to communicate with humans. But by far the most remarkable form of animal communication are the songs of whales. These are fast clicking and squeaking noises that whales make underwater, and the sounds themselves actually contain more information than human speech. Scientists have noticed that some whales repeat certain long phrases of sounds, and this is in fact why they are called songs. Of particular interest is a species called the bottle-nosed whale, whose songs have many of the characteristics of human speech. But at the end of the day, we are the only species that have developed proper grammatical languages, and most experts now agree that this is because of the large communities that we live in, where a child growing up can hear hundreds of different examples of his or her language being spoken every day. If for any reason a young child does not get enough contact with other people between the ages of one and four, he or she may never fully develop the power of speech. One can imagine that if whales or dolphins did start living in large communities, then, well...
So that is the end of part two. Now turn to part three. You are going to hear five different people talking about their relationship with somebody. For questions 19 to 23, match the speakers 1 to 5 with the letters A to H. Use the letters only once. There are three extra letters which you do not need to use. You now have 30 seconds in which to look through part 3. Speaker 1 Generally, I like living at home with my family. There are five of us. I've got a brother and a sister, and we fight a lot, but I love them really. My parents give us everything we need. In fact, they buy us lots of things, especially clothes. My social life suffers a bit, though, as I have to babysit for my little brother and sister quite often, and I have many jobs to do around the house, apart from my work for university. It's difficult to get any spare time to go out and have fun. Sometimes I resent the fact that I have so many responsibilities for someone of my age. Speaker 2 He takes up all of our time as there's so much that he needs. Feeding, changing, bathing and sometimes just a cuddle or some attention. He really has changed our lives completely. I don't resent losing my free time though as he's worth it. Oh, when he smiles at me and looks contented I feel wonderful. We're both very proud of him of course. He's not very entertaining yet, as he can't do much. He just sort of lies there and makes funny noises. The house is messier than it used to be, too. His things are everywhere. But, on the other hand, we try to keep everything really clean, even if it is untidy. Speaker 3 They were always fighting. I think we must have been known as the noisiest house in the street. I was never one for arguing, so I used to try and keep out of the way as much as I could. She often used to cry after a fight, and he'd go out, probably to the pub. Now it's much better. They're almost friends again. He comes to visit sometimes, especially on special occasions, like a birthday or for Christmas. I think they stayed together for our sake, but really it was the worst thing they could have done as we witnessed all the fights, and that was very upsetting. Speaker 4 I guess we have quite a large family for such a small house. Everyone helps out, though, and we all have our own chores to do. Both Mum and Dad work during the day, and we are all at school, so it's good to have someone at home to do the cooking and keep the house in order. They're both wonderful company, anyway, and sometimes when I have a problem and Mum and Dad aren't home or are very busy, they are there for me to talk to. They aren't as strict as my parents, either, and often stick up for me if my father doesn't want me to do something. I like having three generations living under one roof. It's taught us all to be more tolerant and not to be selfish. Speaker 5 We do tend to get under each other's feet a lot, and I wish I could have my own bedroom. But I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. For a start, there's always someone to talk to and someone to help me if I have a problem. There are enough of us to make a basketball team, so we play as a family against our friends. Mum says that we have exhausted her, but really she's very proud of us all. Dad always says he has to work overtime to feed and clothe us, but really he just loves his job and is a workaholic. I think two children would be enough for me, though. You will hear the piece again. Speaker 1 Generally, I like living at home with my family. There are five of us. I've got a brother and a sister, and we fight a lot, but I love them really. My parents give us everything we need. In fact, they buy us lots of things, especially clothes. My social life suffers a bit, though, as I have to babysit for my little brother and sister quite often, and I have many jobs to do around the house, apart from my work for university. It's difficult to get any spare time to go out and have fun. 
Sometimes I resent the fact that I have so many responsibilities for someone of my age. Speaker 2 He takes up all of our time as there's so much that he needs. Feeding, changing, bathing and sometimes just a cuddle or some attention. He really has changed our lives completely. I don't resent losing my free time though as he's worth it. Ah, oh, when he smiles at me and looks contented, I feel wonderful. We're both very proud of him, of course. He's not very entertaining yet, as he can't do much. He just sort of lies there and makes funny noises. The house is messier than it used to be, too. His things are everywhere. But, on the other hand, we try to keep everything really clean, even if it is untidy. Speaker 3 they were always fighting. I think we must have been known as the noisiest house in the street. I was never one for arguing, so I used to try and keep out of the way as much as I could. She often used to cry after a fight, and he'd go out, probably to the pub. Now it's much better. They're almost friends again. He comes to visit sometimes, especially on special occasions, like a birthday or for Christmas. I think they stayed together for our sake, but really, it was the worst thing they could have done, as we witnessed all the fights, and that was very upsetting. Speaker 4 I guess we have quite a large family for such a small house. Everyone helps out, though, and we all have our own chores to do. Both Mum and Dad work during the day, and we are all at school, so it's good to have someone at home to do the cooking and keep the house in order. They're both wonderful company, anyway, and sometimes when I have a problem and Mum and Dad aren't home, or are very busy, they are there for me to talk to. They aren't as strict as my parents either, and often stick up for me if my father doesn't want me to do something. I like having three generations living under one roof. It's taught us all to be more tolerant and not to be selfish. Speaker 5 We do tend to get under each other's feet a lot, and I wish I could have my own bedroom. But I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. For a start, there's always someone to talk to and someone to help me if I have a problem. There are enough of us to make a basketball team, so we play as a family against our friends. Mum says that we have exhausted her, but really she's very proud of us all. Dad always says he has to work overtime to feed and clothe us, but really he just loves his job and is a workaholic. I think two children would be enough for me though. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four. Listen to these two friends discussing the British National Lottery. For questions 24 to 30, choose the best answer A, B or C. There will now be a pause of one minute for you to look through part four. Hey, Tina, what's up with you? You look like you've been to a funeral. Oh, nothing really. I guess I've just had a bad week and then only one of my numbers came up last night. You still doing that stupid old lottery? It's enough to make anyone depressed. I haven't got a good word to say about it myself. All the fuss they make on that silly programme on Saturday night. But everyone's doing it. The paper says it's the biggest lottery in the world. Over 20 million people ended last week, which is a lot if you consider that it's only open to people over 18. Well, that's a good thing. Otherwise, all the kids would be spending all their pocket money on it. How much are you spending on it these days? 
Well, this week I spent ten pounds. Ten pounds? No wonder you're fed up, Tina. I got five entries, and the other five pounds went on scratch cards. And you've been doing this every week since it started. No, this week was special. I just thought I was going to be lucky, but I've had at least one entry a week. It seems silly not to. But you've lost all that money, and it's all gone to Camelot. They don't keep the money. They give it all to charity and the arts. They don't give it all away. They keep a lot of the money, and then they get rich while you get poor. But I might win. Then we'd be millionaires. When are you going to realise you're not going to win? Not with twenty million other people playing. Look how many people do you know who have won anything? Well, um, oh yes, the man at the paper shop said that there's another customer who has won a hundred pounds, and I believe him. Well, that's useless. You've probably spent more than a hundred pounds already. I suppose you've never even played once. No. Oh well, just the once. The lads and I at work did have a go when it started. You mean you were a syndicate? Oh yes, that's the new word for it now. Anyway, after that first week, I just decided I wasn't going to waste any more of my precious money on it. Besides, I don't think it's right. Somebody getting all that money, twenty million or more, for doing nothing. My dad always says, "God help those who help themselves." But that's not going to help me win next week's jackpot. Don't do it, Tina. But I want the money. And so do we all. But if I needed extra cash, I'd go and do the overtime, earn the money in an honest way. You could get a better job instead of going down to the lottery shop. Well, I was thinking of giving it a miss that week. Anyway, maybe that's what I'll do. An extra ten pounds would come in handy. Yeah,、uh, treat yourself to something nice. You need a bit of cheering up. I know. We could go on a day trip to Boulogne, stock up on duty frees on the way back. I fancy something a bit cultural, especially with Christmas just around the corner. You will hear the piece again. Hey, Tina, what's up with you? You look like you've been to a funeral. Oh, nothing really. I guess I've just had a bad week, and then only one of my numbers came up last night. You still doing that stupid old lottery? It's enough to make anyone depressed. I haven't got a good word to say about it myself. All the fuss they make on that silly program on Saturday night. But everyone's doing it. The paper says it's the biggest lottery in the world. Over twenty million people entered last week, which is a lot if you consider that it's only open to people over eighteen. Well, that's a good thing. Otherwise, all the kids would be spending all their pocket money on it. How much are you spending on it these days? Well, this week I spent ten pounds. Ten pounds? No wonder you're fed up, Tina. I got five entries, and the other five pounds went on scratch cards. And you've been doing this every week since it started. No, this week was special. I just thought I was going to be lucky, but I've had at least one entry a week. It seems silly not to. But you've lost all that money, and it's all gone to Camelot. They don't keep the money. They give it all to charity and the arts. They don't give it all away. They keep a lot of the money, and then they get rich while you get poor. But I might win. Then we'd be millionaires. When are you going to realise you're not going to win? Not with twenty million other people playing. Look how many people do you know who have won anything? Well, um, oh yes, the man at the paper shop said that there's another customer who has won a hundred pounds, and I believe him. Well, that's useless. You've probably spent more than a hundred pounds already. I suppose you've never even played once. No. Oh well, just the once. The lads and I at work did have a go when it started. You mean you were a syndicate? Oh yes, that's the new word for it now. Anyway, after that first week, I just decided I wasn't going to waste any more of my precious money on it. Besides, I don't think it's right. Somebody getting all that money, twenty million or more, for doing nothing. My dad always says, "God help those who help themselves." But that's not going to help me win next week's jackpot. Don't do it, Tina. But I want the money. And so do we all. But if I needed extra cash, I'd go and do the overtime, earn the money in an honest way. You could get a better job instead of going down to the lottery shop. Well, I was thinking of giving it a miss that week. 
Anyway, maybe that's what I'll do. An extra £10 would come in handy. Yeah, uh, treat yourself to something nice. You need a bit of cheering up. I know. We could go on a day trip to Boulogne. Stock up on duty freeze on the way back. I fancy something a bit cultural, especially with Christmas just around the corner. That is the end of part four. There will now be a pause of five minutes for you to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. Be sure to follow the numbering of all the questions. I shall remind you when there is one minute left, so that you are sure to finish in time. Pause for four minutes. You have one more minute left. That is the end of the test. Please stop now. Your supervisor will now collect all the question papers and answer sheets.